Hey Adventure Kids, it is so great to see you this morning and I can't wait to share today's Bible story with you. I think you're really going to like it. Oh hey Pascal, what's up? Hey Pastor Steve, I can't wait for today's Bible story. What's it about? Well, you know how we've been following along with the adventures of Paul? He was one of Jesus' disciples and after Jesus died, he was taken prisoner and sent to the city of Rome. Today's Bible story is all about Paul and how he was sharing the good news with as many people as he could in the city of Rome where he was living. You mean the good news about how Jesus rescued us? Yep, that's right. And Paul was telling everyone, his guards, his neighbors, even the leaders of the city, all about Jesus and how he died on the cross to rescue us from our sins. I know that Jesus wants us to tell others all about that stuff, but I just don't know how. I'm not a pastor like you. Well, the important thing to remember is that even though you're young, you can still tell others about Jesus. In fact, that's our Bible point for today. You can share your faith. Each and every one of us are called to share our faith about Jesus, and there are lots of ways that we can do that. How did Paul share his faith? Well, let's jump right into today's Bible story and find out. After the long and dangerous trip by ship, Paul and the others arrived in Rome. Even though he was still a prisoner, Paul wasn't thrown in prison. He was allowed to have his own house, but he had Roman soldiers guarding him. That means he was placed under house arrest, so his activities were probably restricted. But Paul was willing to endure anything if it would bring about salvation for the glory of God. How would you feel if you were under house arrest for a crime you didn't commit? However, Paul was able to invite Jews to his house and tell them about Jesus. He even preached to the soldiers that were guarding him. Three days after Paul's arrival, he invited Jewish leaders to his house. He wanted to tell them he had done nothing deserving arrest and imprisonment. He told them, Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government even though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors. The Romans tried me and wanted to release me because they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. I asked you to come here today so we could get acquainted and so I could explain to you that I am bound with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come. Paul wanted to make it clear that he was a credible witness for Jesus and that he was not a criminal whose testimony they could not believe. Think about this. Would you have a Christ-like attitude like Paul towards others if you had been mistreated? Fortunately, the Jews in Jerusalem had not pursued Paul all the way to Rome. Knock, knock. Who is there? Police. Police who? Police let me in. It's cold out here. Your thermostat needs adjusting. Knock, knock. Who is there? Etch. Etch who? Bless you. I assure you my immune system is satisfactory. Knock, knock. Who is there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. It's just a joke. Emotions are not necessary for my performance. Albert out. Peace. I need some new friends who are funny. Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government, even though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors. The Romans tried me and wanted to release me because they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. I asked you to come here today 
so we could get acquainted and so I could explain to you that I am bound with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come. Paul wanted to make it clear that he was a credible witness for Jesus and that he was not a criminal whose testimony they could not believe. Think about this. Would you have a Christ-like attitude like Paul towards others if you had been mistreated? Fortunately, the Jews in Jerusalem had not pursued Paul all the way to Rome. The Jewish leaders in his house replied, We have no letters from Judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here. But we want to hear what you believe. For the only things we know about this movement is that it is condemned everywhere. They were willing to hear Paul's side of the good news about Jesus. After his meeting with the Jewish leaders, more and more people came to hear Paul preach the gospel. He explained and testified about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures. Paul spoke about the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. He spoke to them from morning until evening. Some were persuaded by the things he said, but others did not believe. Believing is a choice. Refusing to believe is a choice. Whether they believed or not, Paul kept on preaching the good news about Jesus as the Holy Spirit guided him. He explained that the gospel of Jesus Christ was not just for them, but also for all people. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. Would you be willing to teach freely the good news of Jesus to others at your own expense? Paul welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one tried to stop him. God, please give us a strong desire and the words to share the good news of Jesus with others. Amen. And that's our story. Wow! Paul went to a whole new city where everything and everyone was different and new to him. But that didn't stop him from telling others about Jesus. That's right, Pascal. Paul took every opportunity to tell others the good news because he wanted everyone to be a part of God's family. Can I share my faith with the lunch lady? Yep. Can I share my faith with my camp counselor? Yep. Can I share my faith with the Amazon delivery driver? Yeah, yeah, you sure can, Pascal. You can share your faith with everyone. And one of the best ways to share your faith is by being a good example. And you can do that through showing love, being kind, and being respectful to others. And another good way is to share a story about something good that God has done in your life. Oh, I know, I know. I can tell people how God made me really good at cheese ball and math and how he takes care of me when I'm afraid or lonely because I know God is always with me and that helps me feel better. Those are some really great ways to share your faith, Pascal. And that's our Bible point for today. You can share your faith. Hey, Adventure Kids, I want you to think of some ways that you can share your faith with your neighbors, friends, and families and make a plan to do that this week and then let your leaders know next week how it went. Have an adventurous week, everyone. Kids, this is the part of the show where you send in your questions to me, Jake, and I answer them. So let me grab my mailbag. <laughs> Hi Jake, how does God feel about tattoos and piercings? From Ellie. That is an awesome question. The Bible says a lot of things about tattoos and piercings. But oftentimes, people look at one specific verse without understanding all the background, and that can lead to misunderstanding. Overall, God doesn't forbid tattoos and piercings. There's even a verse where God says he'll put a ring on your nose and earrings in your ears. So I don't think God forbids those things, but I also think God cares why you do these things. If you get a tattoo with a bad message, that might make God sad. 
If you covered your face with piercings because you thought that God made you ugly, I think that would make God sad. But if your heart to get a tattoo or piercing is motivated by love, and you think it's something that honors God, I think he'd be good with that. Awesome question. Hi Jake, can you say something in sign language from Hannah? That is an awesome question. Let's find out. So remember, if you have a question for me, Jake, just go to the website takeawaywithjake.com and I'll be happy to answer your question right here on the show. Thank <laughs> you.